nutrition and supplementation, some of the key things that you want to do if you have scoliosis. When we look at the treatment of scoliosis patients and how nutrition or diet could affect scoliosis or maybe be involved with this causation of scoliosis, there's some interesting theories and concepts that are associated with it. And some patients think that, you know, that diet is not affected, uh, doesn't affect scoliosis at all. And in fact, I find that not true, that your nutrition, your, your diet has, can have an effect on how well you not only respond to treatment, but also how your body recovers from any kind of care or treatment that's actually being provided. So let's really kind of look in depth on why we believe scoliosis and diet and nutrition is very important. We're going to talk about really what kind of avoid, what kind of foods to avoid if you have scoliosis or if you're under treatment for scoliosis. And we're also focused on what kind of foods that you should be trying to consume if you're under the treatment or if you have scoliosis. So why is nutrition important with patients with scoliosis? Well, we know first and foremost that if you're going to go through active treatment to reduce the scoliosis, especially in a conservative manner, meaning a conservative manner will be a structural approach just trying to apply forces to the body to get to the spine to reduce the curve. The leaner you are, the easier it is to apply forces to your body to help reduce your curve than the less lean you are. So the thinner you are, the better you respond to any type of bracing, any type of traction, any type of therapy, any type of rehab performed to the body to get a better result. Also, exercises are easier to perform if you're leaner versus if you're, if you're not as lean. So performing your home therapy, your home exercises, all those types of things will have a better response in a leaner patient than a patient that's not so lean. In addition, there is some theoretical uh, data that suggests that scoliosis patients may not have the ability to methylate B12 vitamins effectively. Now, why is this important? Well, methylating B12 or B12 is, is responsible for spinal cord and nerve development during growth. And if you can't methylate B12 properly during growth and development, one theory is that there's asymmetrical spinal cord development that's, in, that's happening during growth phases, which could lead to scoliosis. So taking a methylated B12 supplement could be something that could help you or help a patient with scoliosis. The issue is by the time you discover scoliosis, most scoliosis cases are, are discovered 25, 30 degrees or greater, at this point, you can take all the B12 you want. It's not going to reduce your scoliosis. But is it still important probably for you to take a B12 just for overall health and well-being, knowing that you may have the inability to methylate B12 properly? In addition, B12 is also for every neurotransmitter that your body makes. Your body needs, neuro, needs B12 as part of the neurotransmitter making. So a lot of people out there now, uh, or several groups out there, are now starting to sell um, neurotransmitter supplementation for patients with scoliosis. Well, if you take the methyl you take a methylated B12, you're providing yourself the, the, the first product it needs in order to make the neurotransmitter. So you may not even need the neurotransmitter, which is an end product. You may just need the product ahead of the line in order for your body to produce it. So those, that one supplement is important for scoliosis patients to be consuming. Also, we know that just having an overall better diet leads to overall general health. And if we have overall better health, we're going to have better response to any type of scoliosis treatment. And it's going to allow better, better body balance that's going to help try to slow down scoliosis progression. So what are some key f foods that we want all scoliosis patients to try to avoid? Some of this is pretty obvious, like fast foods, processed foods, because they don't increase or they, your ability to lose weight, they actually increase increase your ability to gain more weight, and the more weight that you gain, the less effective any treatment will be. Soda, especially um, diet versions. We found diet versions in long-term studies to actually cause more weight gain than non-diet versions, meaning the, the sugar-free versions or artificial sweetened versions. Uh, foods with corn syrup, we know that increases inflammation, which can increase point, uh, pain levels. Artificial sweeteners, like I mentioned with the sodas, increase inflammation, which are they're also a neurotoxin, which can cause effects on the nerve system, help increase pain. Neuro, um, something like MSG, which is again a neurotoxin, which can affect pain levels and inflammation. Excess salt, meaning iodized salt, can affect your ability to uh, to decrease weight. It also creates a water retention, which makes it help makes you have more pain, not respond as well to treatment. Alcohol can increase pain levels and inflammation levels, so therefore it makes it more difficult to tolerate treatment. 
coffee, especially um, post in the uh, post afternoon, like from 12 beyond can increase cortisol levels, make it more difficult for you to sleep and get a good rest. And then white flour, white flour can have an effect because it's like a sugar, your body uh, uses like a processed food, like a processed sugar, and can help increase uh, your inflammation levels, which makes it more difficult for you to tolerate treatment. So what are some types of food that you wanna focus on in order to get a better diet or a better nutrition program for your scoliosis treatment that you're about to receive or the treatment that you're currently under. Well, fresh fruits and vegetables, we know they very have a high, high water content, which help get rid of toxins from your from your body. Non-processed meats, meaning we're looking at free-range beef, we're looking at uh, wild salmon, wild fishes, wild cold water fishes, and we're looking for also a uh, free range kind of uh, poultry. We're looking at non-processed meats, you know, not, not like deli meats, but like fresh whole meats. We're looking at foods that contain calciums and vitamin D. Vitamin D and calcium is important for bone development. And of course, uh, water. One thing in terms of good healthy water, what kind of water, should, how much water should you be consuming? That's a very common question to get asked. If you're under scoliosis treatment, more likely you're doing therapy, exercises, and rehab, and having your joints hydrated is a very important concept to help improve the results of your scoliosis treatment. So when we look at water, most people are saying like half your body weight in ounces is what you should be consuming for an average person not doing any type of activity or any type of exercise. So if you weigh 100 pounds, you should be consuming about 50 ounces. However, if you're active, meaning that you're doing exercise or you're doing scoliosis care, you should increase that increase that, maybe anywhere another 25%. So if we weigh 100 pounds, maybe you should do about 75 um, ounces. If you're doing intense exercises where you have a lot of sweat, like you're a runner or a marathon runner, you're doing high intensity exercises, you can be hitting 100% of your body weight in ounces. So if you weigh 100 pounds, you should be doing about 100 ounces. So it really depends on your activity level minimally 50% of your body weight, up to 100% of your body weight, depending on your activity level. If you're in a scoliosis rehabilitation program, I suggest somewhere around 75% of your body weight, assuming there's no other health conditions that could affect your ability to metabolize water properly. So the, lastly here, when it comes to scoliosis and nutrition, you understand that when you look at these changes that you have to make with your nutrition, nutrition is an ongoing thing, that you're constantly trying to work on proper nutrition and trying to battle the way the world is moving which is normally less healthy, poorer nutrition, and not as nutrition content, co conscious in terms of building health and well-being. But the better nutrition you have, the higher energy levels you have, the better strength you have, and the, the more effectively you'll be able to treat your scoliosis because the leaner you'll be, and the leaner you are, the better response you'll have to scoliosis treatment. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.